In this demonstration, we are going to execute a shell script that we will use to launch various EMR clusters and then to load various jobs into these clusters. I'm not going to go into absolute detail of every option here. After all, the AWS command is very well documented. My intent is to show you an overview of how this all works. Now, I also have very deliberately chosen to use data and sample scripts from AWS. This will give you the best chance to replicate this work. However, I do download it all into S3 and then modify the jobs to run in my own S3 buckets. If you search on the AWS tutorials and samples, you will be able to recreate this demonstration. Let us do a pre-check. The first thing we want to do is check our user. There you go. Our AWS default profile is now set to AWS Admin. And we can check that the profile is working. Great. We have access to the AWS command as well. Now let's cd into our scripts directory. Here's the script. Let's have a careful walkthrough. This is a script we write for educational purposes. The first thing we do is we will set a key variable. Now let us page through slowly. At the top of the script we have a bunch of functions we use to support our menuing. We have a pause function. We have a yes no function. We have a usage statement, a quit function, a heading function. Now we have some functions that we use internally to other functions, such as let's get the cluster ID. Here's the function. It's going to ask us to enter a cluster ID, and it'll check and see if this ID is set. There's a function here for removing the output directories. We're going to use the AWS S3 command. We check to see if it exists, and if it does, then we delete it. Next, we have a function that gives our job name and a function for error checking. Now, let us step through the functions for the cluster itself. The first function is to launch the cluster. As you can see, the AWS EMR command can be very complicated. There are a lot of different options. I will give you one hint I have found from experience. You need to make sure that absolutely after your backspace, there is no additional spaces. This will cause these commands to fail. Now, as you can see with the create cluster, we're going to give the cluster a name. We pick a version for our AMI. We then set up something called instant groups. The instant groups sets us to a master or core. We then determine the size and the number that we want set up. I'm going with the good old M1 large. Then we need to set some attributes, such as a key name, and we're going to use default roles. We're also going to determine our log output, and we want to go to our own S3. We're going to certainly enable debugging. And we get to determine the applications we want loaded. In this case, I'm going to load Hive, Pig, and Hue. We do a little bit of error checking to ensure that it actually provisioned. Great. Let's look at the next function. Here, we're going to ask for a listing of the clusters that we run. We'll use this command to run multiple clusters. Here, we use AWS EMR list clusters. And then we're going to grep for clusters and then use our awk statement to pull out the information that we're looking for. Now, here's a describe cluster function. This gives us a complete listing and all the details we have of the running cluster. We will find this very helpful. Finally, a function to terminate the clusters. We enter the cluster ID. It will come through and terminate the cluster. Now, let's move forward. We're going to look at the job functions. 
The first function is to run a Hive job. We call it Do Run Hive. As you can see, we set the code name, and these would be set by hand, or you could create an input format for that. We set the cluster ID, we remove the output directory, we call for the name of the job that we're looking for, and then we input into the AWS EMR add steps command. And you can see that when we go to the option for dash dash steps, we set the type, the name, the action on failure, and then all the different arguments. This should look somewhat familiar if you've actually experimented with using the steps command from the EMR web console. Let us look at the next one. Here we're going to run pig. The same thing again. We set a code name for the pig report. We call for the cluster ID. We remove the output directory and then we call for the job name. We then use AWS EMR add steps. And again, the steps are fairly simple. We're going to type it as a pig job. We're going to set the name input. We're going to tell the action on failure. And then we're going to input a number of arguments. The arguments are pretty much always the same. We're going to input a script. We're going to have an input directory. We're going to have an output directory. This is one of the reasons why I like to manipulate this and move all the data into my own S3. Now, we're going to run a custom jar. We're going to run the good old-fashioned word count. We're following the same format. And let us look at the AWS EMR add steps. Again, we're starting to see a familiar pattern. For the step type is custom. We've got a name for the job. We've got an action on failure. And then we're going to input. We have an input for the jar file. We have arguments into the jar file, which is the name of the class, as well as the input directory and the output directory. Here is the do run stream. And we're following a fairly for set format by this time. Now the last function we're going to look at is called run job. And this is an example of executing a create cluster and putting the steps into the cluster itself. So it's a combination of the two steps that we've already looked at, which is creating a cluster and then loading jobs. This time we're going to do it as a single function. And one of the things we're adding is a terminate upon completion, which you see here with the auto terminate. Well, that completes all the jobs. Let's just have a quick look at the main program. We start with some traps. Now we've created a while loop where we present the screen options and we've got them numbered 1 through 9. And then we run a case statement to pull all these in and run the various functions. Excellent. Why don't we give this a whirl? Here we go. Our menu function is running. I suggest that we launch a cluster. We'll call this one EDU cluster. There's the cluster ID. Now it does take a couple minutes. On a very busy day, it can take up to 20 minutes before your cluster is available. I want to launch a second cluster. We will call this EDU demo. And there's the second ID. Now we can list the clusters that are running. There we have EDU demo and EDU cluster. And there are the cluster IDs. We'll take the EDU cluster. Excellent. The cluster is now waiting for its next task. Let's give it some work. I would like to run my first job as a Hive job. Let's send that one to the EDU demo cluster. We're going to call it first Hive. Great. Why don't we run the pig job next? We'll send that to EDU cluster. And let's go ahead and queue up the other two jobs. 
Let's do our custom jar. We'll send that to EDU demo. And let's run our streaming job as well. We'll send this one to EDU cluster. Great. All these jobs are now running on the two clusters that we launched. Now, I think it's time to run the monthly sales report. This will launch another cluster, which will run the job and then terminate at the end of the job. Let's look at all the different clusters that are running now. We have EDU demo, EDU cluster, and we also have the unnamed one. Let's take a quick status of one of the clusters. Here, we can see that it is running a step. Now, why don't we go to our web console, look up EMR, and see the status from that point of view. Here's all our different clusters running. We have two running. We have one that's starting. Let's look at the status of EDU cluster. We have a first pig that's running. We have a first stream that's pending. Let's look at EDU demo. Here, we've got first hive. It's running. And we're waiting to run the first jar. And you can see that this cluster is still being built. We've got sales report pending. We have install pig, set up Hadoop debugging, and install hive, all pending as the cluster comes online. Now, let's go look at the output data. We'll go to our output folder, and we'll look first at the output for the jar file. There it is, complete success. We'll look at CloudFront. Here's the output. Here's the output from first pig. Now, let's go back to our EMR cluster. And let's check the status of this one that we ran as a sales report. Ah, it failed. Well, what's really helpful is having logs to look at. Here we can go directly to the standard error log. Could not open input file for reading. Well, that's a clear message. We should be able to troubleshoot and fix this one fairly quickly. And now, the last step would be to run our EMR script and terminate all the running clusters. I'll do that after. For the moment, I believe we've demonstrated how to write an EMR script and to run it from the command line.